Hi, we are Amy Nemanja and Kai from IBM. We talk about our first steps implementing global iCell for the PowerPC backend. We take a brief look at the challenges we encountered, some interesting discoveries we made, and at some tooling issues. The first challenge we encountered was understanding some legalization details. In general, the legalization step is easy to grasp, but we had some hard time to find out when one or two type indices needs to be used. No big deal if you know where it is defined. Another interesting challenge was the insight that no new machine basic block can be added in the legalizer. Of course, this is not, nothing which is normally required and there are easy workarounds. More interesting, to return the preferred register bank in the register bank selector, some code had to be added to distinguish between integer and floating point types. This is needed because the low level type has only a bit size for scalar types, which is different from the machine value types. This is kind of an optimization, but it makes sense for load and store operations, for example. And the fourth challenge that we encountered was related to generating a combiner in that there was an option to add an additional parameter. However, when we're adding an, an additional parameter, we ended up with a missing space between the type and the name. And But thankfully, there is an easy workaround to this issue, but an actual fix has already been upstreamed. Furthermore, we found out that the gen generated match from the SDEG doesn't always behave as we expected. And in our case, we're working with the commutative add operation where the is commutable flag was ignored. Furthermore, we also saw that in these cases, whenever the immediate was being used as the left-hand side operand, these cases were not matched by the generated matcher. And finally, for the last challenge that we encountered, it was related to pattern selection. So we experienced some complications when attempting to select certain extend patterns in the PowerPC backend. And you can see the first pattern with the sign extend could be recognized by the instruction selector, but not that second pattern with the zero extension. So I'll talk about some of the interesting discoveries that we had, and the first one being related to the generic machine IR opcode G merge values and G unmerge values, where that these operands always take these opcodes always take operands in little endian ordering, even if the target is in big endian. So this may come up as a surprise for developers who are working exclusively on big endian. Furthermore, we found out that not every SD node has an equivalent generic machine IR opcode. It's not always clear whether or not that's just the current state of development or whether there are certain design choices being made here. We also found that lowering for the G select opcodes only implemented for vector operands at this time, but we also know that a straightforward upstream fix can be made for other operand types too. Furthermore, uh, lib calls for gen generic opcodes may be missing. And in our case, we found that the lib calls for gmol was missing. So we've already upstreamed the fix uh, for that issue as well. And finally, in terms of the interesting discovery for calling conventions, we found out that since one of our main calling conventions in the PowerPC backend doesn't use table de gen definitions, and since only a stub definition of that is available, so when using it in global ISO, it's we found out it caused some issues where whenever the ABI does not support passing vector parameters, we weren't able to scalarize vector vectors in order to pass them as scalar values, as we can see on the right-hand side diagram there. As usual during development, we also experienced crashes with the tooling. LLVM table gen hit an assertion when generating a combiner which used a sequence of instructions as patterns. Clearly, that feature was not used in other targets. That was easy to fix, and we certainly interested in extending the combiner feature in the future. And another crash of table gen occurs in the global ISIL emitter when a very special pattern is used. To trigger the crash, the pattern must use an intrinsic and a target constant as an operand, and the replacement uses an immediate as the operand type. Such patterns can be found in some targets, for example, in the hexagon and the system C target. We are still working on fixing this bug. Our overall experience with global ISEL is very positive. It can be straightforward implemented, and having a complete selection deck implementation available certainly helps. Our main education source was a previous LLVM developer meeting talk, and we like to thank the authors for it. And in order to contribute back to the community, we also plan to create a global ISO cookbook to assist other targets in adopting the global ISO framework to their backends as well. We've already put up a first draft of the cookbook here on Fabricator. And finally, for in terms of framework improvements, we plan to contribute to the framework and update the documentation as necessary throughout our journey. 
And that concludes our, our experiences with adopting Global ISO to the PowerPC backend. Thanks everyone for watching.